Yeah, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm happy to be here and to be representing a, a brief presentation of countermeasures that we took in order to uh, gain control over or, or the spread of the virus. So I'm going to walk you through the timeline of, of the countermeasures that we took or the things that we did in this uh, lockdown period or before the lockdown period. And I'm going to stop at each bullet point and, and comment slightly a little bit more. So what we knew about the coronavirus, we knew it was a zoonotic virus. We knew that it caused more outbreaks and uh, that it's gonna, it was better transmitted. We also knew that the virus was very devious because it showed no symptoms while uh, it was spreading uh, in communities in and around the people. So uh, we started very early uh, in 24th of January and we activated medical screening at the airports. So we have three airports uh, in Lithuania with around 7 million people traveling through those gates each year. And uh, at the beginning we have our people from uh, uh, Public Health Bureau uh, advertising at the airports. If you are coming from overseas, come here and talk with us. Maybe you have some symptoms, maybe we can direct you to the uh, position or we can give you some uh, examples what we, would you have to do if you felt some symptoms. So uh, at the 27th of January we activated the emergency operation center uh, that is under Ministry of Health. So they were always working but they were more precautious and they were just observing the situation. It allowed us to start involving more people and getting ready for a for pandemic situation. So on the 26th of February, we declared a state of emergency in the country, and that meant that we were able to take some countermeasures that would cause some, uh, let's say, uh, uh, you need to have a strong political will to make decisions. So it allowed to make his decisions uh, more easily uh, and to affect more people. So we've been testing people uh, since the very beginning of, of February and all those results were negative. But on 28th of February, we got first positive COVID test. And it was a lady that came back from Italy. She was in conference and uh, uh, that was our first case. So on 11th of March, WHO declared a global pandemic. And uh, with this, uh, we were able to uh, announce countrywide quarantine. Uh, what, what does mean quarantine? That we were able to make some decisions and starting locking down the country uh, to enable healthcare uh, supply system and uh, personnel. So on 23rd of March, Lithuanian Armed Forces joined the Emergency Operations Center. I'm going to be talking, talking about it a little bit later, but what that meant is that they overtook the logistics uh, where the supply were coming with the airplanes, trains, trucks, so they distributed to the hospitals and all of our healthcare centers. So if I would go further, so, and I will talk about healthcare response to crisis situation. So inpatient healthcare providers were uh, reorganizing kind of clusters. So we had five big regional clusters where all the hospitals were under those clusters. So we have 102 hospitals in Lithuania and it would be hard and harsh communication with all of them. So we kind of, uh, admin, in, a, in, in administrative level, it was much easier for us to have five big partners that were communicating with Ministry of Health. So we were uh, actually, those smaller hospitals were transferring their problems to the bigger ones. And they were referring to us to the Ministry of Health. So we were having uh, meetings every single evening uh, in the afternoon and reporting the cases in the region. So on the 13th of March, we have opened a COVID hotline uh, and people, all the people from Lithuania were able to call it and uh, talk about their symptoms, uh, about their problems, about their issues they're having related to COVID-19. Uh, later on, that uh, COVID hotline turned kind of into a registration line where people were able to register to fever clinics or to mobile uh, testing points. So on the 16th of March, uh, several things happened. So uh, activities of primary healthcare institution have been uh, restricted or suspended. So we didn't want people to go anymore to primary healthcare centers unless it was emergency or something uh, or, or very um, serious issue. 
uh, remote patient counseling became fully operational. So I don't know if you heard, but uh, over 90% of public services in Lithuania are available online. So both including e-health and e-education. So those physicians actually came back to work and they were sitting in their offices uh, meeting one or two patients per day and doing the rest of the counseling via phone or prescribing e-prescriptions. So at the same day, we opened drive through test points. So altogether, I think it was 30, 35, if I'm, I'm right, in the whole country. Uh, and home care services, including palliative care, that's uh, most vulnerable uh, area, was not suspended. So fever clinics uh, were launched uh, on the 20, 23rd of uh, March, and that means that people having a severe fever uh, were directed not to mobile points, but to the fever clinics where they were tested for COVID. So at the end, on 30th of March, we launched a healthcare professional educational platform, and I'm gonna talk about it a little bit later. So if I go a bit further, so this is a map of Lithuania, and here you see the five regions uh, that were uh, country divided to, and uh, every single region had a responsible uh, hospital that was taking care of smaller uh, counties or municipalities. Uh, it matched with uh, five emergency medical services centers or ambulance services, so it gained us a better uh, control of staff allocation, we were able to transfer staff from one hospital to another. If there was an outbreak, so we were able to transfer patients as well and coordinate the flow of the patients, uh, both inter-hospital and intra-hospital. And uh, we also were able to distribute better our uh, both personal equipment and, and, and medical equipment. So if I will talk about numbers in, in infrastructure, so for medical ventilation, we have 300 machines per 1 million of population. And during that period, at least around 1% uh, of the capacity of our uh, ventilating machines were in operation with COVID-19 patients. Uh, the same happened with uh, uh, O2 supply systems, where we had uh, 1,800 beds for 1 million of population. So let me continue on the next slide, and this is an overview of our uh, supply chain. So we had two main uh, things that we were, we were getting our supply. So it was manufacturers based in uh, Lithuania, European Union, or outside of European Union, and funds uh, that people were donating and we were receiving. So all these uh, goods flow to under Ministry of Health and our main warehouse that was established. So we're, our aim was to have supplies at least for 30 days in the warehouse and to distribute to regional cluster, to ambulance services, to fever clinics, primary health care centers, and have another 30 days of supplies there stored there. So now our goal is to have uh, 90 days of supply, so 60 days of supply stored in main warehouse and 30 more stored in, in healthcare centers. And all this being done by the military of, of Lithuanian military that were helping us with the logistics. So if I continue further, as I mentioned earlier, so we had this education and training for uh, healthcare professionals. So we established the platform with, uh, we were working with a uh, uh, infectologists and, uh, and, and other scientists in order to gain control and know that more about the case reports, treatment approaches, diagnostics, nature of virus, the pathogen uh, and how it affects urban areas uh, and non-urban areas. So we established this platform and we launched online sessions in cooperation with uh, professionals of Institute of Hygiene. So what we did during those sessions, so we divided country once again in small small regions, small municipalities. So we were inviting administrators, both from the healthcare centers, administrators from uh, municipalities that were taking care of uh, or were responsible for healthcare. And we were asking them questions about how they are controlling the spread of coronavirus in their institution. What measures do they take? Uh, does the personnel know where the gear is? And do, do, do the personal, does the personnel know how to wear it correctly? So we're asking one by one and allowed everybody to listen. And at the end, we just gave a feedback of uh, our, our uh, 
epidemiologist from Institution of Hygiene uh, give some recommendations uh, what what uh, and how uh, work should be organized in, in a healthcare institution. So at the very end, we found it that uh, the most vulnerable were the care homes, uh, facilities, and social care facilities. So we continued uh, with, the, with the approach there. And what we realized during these training sessions or the period of training sessions that you know, people uh, or institution haven't received the training were those where the outbreaks happened. So education is key number one to preventing COVID. So uh, we had this quarantine release and I would like to mention that grocery stores were remained during the open during the whole period of coronavirus. So uh, the cashiers had physical barriers from the customers and they were able to sell uh, the goods. Pharmacies were open with some precautions as well. Healthcare services limited, but still open. Public transport remained open during the whole period. So the first thing we did, so we reopened the shops uh, especially those who having entrance from the outside. So the customer could enter the shopping center uh, from the outside. And we limited the numbers of customers who could enter the, the, the shops. Uh, so it was, we strongly recommended not to leave home only when necessary and always wear protective gear, no matter where you go, either it's in outside or inside. So number step two was we, are think, we were thinking about the economy. And of course, we had to relaunch the bars and some small businesses. And that led that we need a decision where we need to control, still control the pandemic, uh, but allow people to go outside. So our decision were to open the bars that were in the streets. So Vilnius, the capital city, became open bar. So because municipality decided that uh, all, almost all the uh, streets in the old town uh, were established as dining places. So uh, we advised for those restaurants and, facil and facilities to have high hygiene standards and safety requirements. So number three uh, that we did was uh, we allowed inside dining, but no, not more than five people uh, at one table. So we allowed public events. We opened libraries. We opened gyms. Uh, concerts and, and, and resume travel. So first flight happened on uh, uh, May of 13, where Lufthansa Airlines landed in, in the Vilnius airport. And number four, uh, it's where we are now. So we are wearing masks in, uh, we're not wearing masks in public places, but once we go in, in a shopping mall or, or, or in institution, so we have to open, uh, we have to uh, cover us with a mask. So you perhaps heard it about uh, Baltic bubble phenomena, where we created uh, this kind of uh, travel free uh, agreement between all the three Baltic countries. So borders uh, remain partly open. Government initiatives are continuing to boost the economy. And uh, perhaps this is the last slide. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the factors uh, that allowed us to make a decision. So the first of all, we were looking for international recommendations. We were following evidence-based findings. So at least we were looking at surveillance data uh, and only then making analysis and uh, continuing should we proceed with this or not. Uh, also, local experiences was very, very uh, good thing to learn from uh, because from the outbreaks, we learn where the virus come into institution uh, and how it spreads. So it was very, very beneficial for us. Understanding residents, it may resemble like understanding the customers, but when understanding the customers is when you're trying to attract one customer into your shop. But in our situation, when you had all the customers suddenly in, in, in shop wanting to buy everything. So uh, it worked us in Easter because Easter is perhaps the second biggest uh, uh, event in Lithuania celebration uh, where people tend to travel to, to visit their parents. And we locked down the bigger cities and we didn't allow to people coming from other cities to enter those. Uh, so it has allowed us to stabilize the situation. 
So what also we did is was looking back in uh, retrospectively to SARS and MERS. So perhaps all of you heard about uh, St. Louis and Philadelphia, what happened uh, during uh, Spanish pandemic flu in 1918. Uh, and also we did analysis of uh, global countermeasures. So we were examining the methods and tactics that were used by our countries. So this is it. Thank you very much.